Hello, hello, this is Alice. If you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you've been with me for a while, welcome back. You know the drill, turn on that 4K resolution on the video. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year whenever you're watching. I'm just wearing this hat for the occasion and for fun. I wish you a happy 2023. So it's finally time for this uh, gigantic project's progress update. If you guys have missed out on the series so far, I'll make sure to link at the end of the video the playlist for unboxing and getting up this kit. And any future progress update and the finishes will go into the same playlist. Long story short, I made a group order from Diamond Painting Deutschland. I kit up 220 with a very engineered method. If you haven't seen that, make sure to check it out in the end. But so far, so good. It's definitely a bit of a confetti challenge, I will say that, with the 220 colors in here. But it's been really fun. I never have a dull moment, that's for sure. Um, some of you asked me how I position this canvas because it's so big. So as you can see, I have a gigantic R dot light pad here. It's a, a one size light pad. And I put it on a desktop easel like this and put it on pretty much the most vertical you can go kind of angle. So that when I put this on a desk, I basically dot on it vertically to relax some of my neck pressure. Um, the reason for doing this is because I simply don't have a room for a drafting table at home. I already have a high adjustable desk in my office at home. So I work on that during the day and then at night I would put the easel on top of the desk and then I would put the light pad on and put the canvas on and I can adjust the height of the desk to wherever that this section is comfortable for my eye level and my arm. So that's sort of convenient and also be able to use one desk for two purposes. Sometimes Andrew joke about I'm gonna get massive gun from just working on this kit because the arm is always, you know, hanging in the air trying to do the dots. Uh, my previous exercise history kind of helps, but after an hour or two, I'm like, yeah, my arm does kind of need a break. So, you know, I go do something else. Um, long story short though, it's very confetti heavy and I want you guys to have an experience of what it's like to work on such a confetti heavy kit with me. So I have a few colors left. I'll work with you guys together today. And I'm gonna talk about some pros and cons of working on this kit on a light pad. It's actually not always the most ideal. So yeah, there's some gotchas like that. Without further ado, let's just get onto working on the canvas together. So first thing first, my biggest complaint of this kit is that there are so many symbols that are very similar to each other. So here I got a large Munime tray and I got the dividers from them as well. And here are some of the symbols I'm working together because in some of the areas here, these three colors are often together in the big blotches. So that's why I have them all laid out in here and I sort of have them stand up towards me when I'm working on them. And look at this, two triangles solid just facing different directions. How confusing is that? And then on top of that, we have two triangles, one solid, one hollow, both facing down. So you just gotta be really careful. I really cannot work on this kit when I'm feeling, feeling a little sleepy. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna, I have misplaced some color, let's just say that. And pulling the colors um, off a double-sided adhesive is no fun at all. So this is a color that had a lot of them in this corner, but I still missed some of them over here, as you can clearly see. My method of working through this section is basically first work on any color that there's a lot of, and then gradually do the one with fewer ones. And at this point, it's kind of slow going because I'm just filling in these holes with only a few of each color. Dang it, I missed it again. Pouring it right back out <laughs> to fill it. See, this happens a lot. But confetti does keep it interesting. There's never a dull moment. I could barely talk about the pros and cons because 
I pour out and there's only one color, you gotta look for the symbol again. So I'm gonna fast forward the parts where I am not talking. So yeah, something about the light pad. Because of the double-sided adhesive, the double-sided adhesive itself has some texture and when you turn on the light pad, the texture itself sort of let more light through and it eventually resulted making the symbol even harder to read. What did I tell you about not working on this kit when I'm tired? This is the wrong symbol. And it's so similar. And because the light pad makes the pattern of the double-sided adhesive sort of sink through, bleed through, and the symbol is harder to read, I pretty much can't really make that much progress on this kit at night after work. However, working on it during the day, or if I have a strong overhead lamp, like I would have when I'm filming this video, because, you know, lighting for video is needed, then it's actually not bad. So light pad only provide limited value because of the double-sided adhesive. If you want to work on a large kit like this, I would say invest in some sort of way that would help you position your canvas over a light pad. And the other thing that often happens, like it is right now, is I saw a symbol or a color, I pour it out, and because there's so few of them, I immediately lost track where I needed to go. Am I complaining though? I'm actually having fun. The other thing that's kind of uh, annoying about working on this kit is um, I'll probably add some more picture over here, but for example, this symbol, it looks more brownish on a sticker, but on the canvas, it looks kind of greenish. So, Sometimes I pour it out to make sure it's the right color because it's a similar color to the ones next to it. But the color on here doesn't always match the one on here. Some people suggest to do a smaller section on a big kit like this, but for me, it's the opposite. To avoid dumping color in and out over and over again, I actually prefer to work on a semi-large section. So, you know, one Diamond Art Club release paper or even one and a half because I work on this entire section at once. Because, yes, sometimes I end up missing some colors, but at least most of the time when I pour out one color, I get to feel more than just one or two drills. I enjoy that process more. The, the section size doesn't really intimidate me because I know I'm just gonna take my time. One thing I definitely discovered that is important to do because they have similar symbols just facing different directions is to make sure you align the sticker on the bottle the same direction as your canvas. Especially right now, I'm working on it upside down because I'm having the camera facing you guys. This is definitely very helpful. When I have to search through so many symbols all the time, on the last few colors, well, I say few, it's probably like 20 or 30. But when I'm working on the last few colors on this section, my method of being able to search for the symbols in a document is actually really helpful. Because just imagine the fatigue of having to search through colors all the time. I'm basically searching through a different color every single minute. Wait, 
Is that actually the right symbol? No, it's the opposite. See? You see what I mean? So this is correct. It was this symbol. It was this symbol. Not that symbol. They are literally just the mirror image of each other. I'm trying to not go into this area because I meant to stop at this line. You can see it has a slightly thicker line. It's actually how they do it. Small, really little sections, but I don't want to do that small. But I also try not to color chase, which happens. Oh boy, I'm color chasing again. Here we go, this is the mirrored image. I wish they would choose the ones that are a little less confusing to mirror. But when it comes to so many color, your choices are only so many. Once again, this is the color I did earlier. But I suddenly realized I missed one. Right here. Hmm, this has an extra bit. I don't like that. Tiny things like that, it's really hard to see if I'm working on it at night without really strong light like I currently do. Last one, two, three, four, five. Last five colors, ladies and gentlemen. We are so close to finishing this one section. Sometimes I give up pouring them out because I only need one, so I just get it from the Tic Tac. Oh my God, this is the last one. It's the castle symbol. And for the longest time, I thought it's a floppy disk when I look on the canvas. This looks a little like the floppy disk, doesn't it? But then I realized it's a castle. Oh my god, this section is finally complete. Well, you gotta ignore the top part here where I was chasing colors. So now every single dot has been filled in. As you can see, here's some random colors that you can't really make sense of what it is, but you really gotta zoom out. So I'm gonna put the original picture right here, and you will see it's only one little corner of it. Yeah, this is the experience of working on confetti. Mostly I do the color blobs here. It's much less painful, but then towards the end of the section, there's a lot of colors that only have one diamond. This is when I sometimes do lose patience. I go do something else and come back. And um, as you can see, I would kind of use the tweezer to say, just get one diamond out of it, like this. So that kind of helps. And um, I'm about to open the next section, but I'm not gonna work on it today, just so you guys can see what it's like because it gets a little bit into the dress. So yeah, as you can see, this is a really, really colorful kit. There seem to be fewer color here, albeit more sprinkled. I might bite my tongue next time, so let's see what I say in my next progress update. It will possibly be at least another month because family and I are traveling. So there you have it. This is the bottom left corner of Fly Me to the Moon. As you can see, the confetti got a little intense over there and I almost couldn't tell what the little patch that's quite dark over here is. But I'm gonna put an original image here and I'm gonna circle. I end up realizing that it's the shadow of the start of her dress. So it's the wave that it's making. So it makes sense, but you know, the rendering, this is the way it is. 
With the difficulty that it has been working on it because of the confetti, I don't think I can work on this for the next several months, possibly a year, as my sole project because of how big it is and the amount of confetti that it has. So I'm definitely gonna intertwine it with some other project. I do have some other ones going to go, so if you want to stay up to date with my current work in progress, which one I'm working on and stuff like that, Instagram is definitely the place to go. With that being said, I hope you'll give me a like and subscribe on your way out. Check out the video over here for the whole series. Let me know in the comments down below what is the big kit that you're currently working on, whether you enjoy confetti or color blocking. With that being said, I'll see you next time. Bye!